This incredible non-staged footage from the Russian film The Battle for the Gun fits in well with today's video. This is part 20 in the series that covers this sensational war diary written by a platoon leader from the motorized infantry division Das Reich named Kurt who led during the final assault on Moscow in the winter of 1941-42. Using Kurt's first-hand account and associated rare film clips, we'll follow a raiding party as it storms a fortified Soviet position in order to destroy an artillery observation post that had been targeting the Reich Division. Use the QR code at the end of this video to open a free account and see the rest of the film, The Battle for the Gun. Patreon supporters get access to this type of material regularly. It's worth it, I promise. In part 19 of this series, we saw how Soviet formations had managed to put the 17th Panzer Division and the 29th Motorized Infantry Division under considerable pressure. In response, the SS Division Reich, along with the elite Infantry Regiment Großdeutschland, were rushed to the northwest in support. But here on August 10th, we see that the 17th Panzer Division was moved back in support of the Reich Division and the Infantry Regiment Großdeutschland, which took their place on the front line. When possible, the German High Command avoided using Panzer Divisions in defensive attritional battles, which could wear them down. They tried to save their strength for offensive operations. Put simply, to use infantry to hold ground and armor to seize it. The 29th Motorized Infantry Division, having been badly mauled, was moved south to a much less active sector. Der 12. August 1941. In reaction to our resupply and movement along the road being under constant enemy artillery fire, a raiding party from our 2nd Battalion, reinforced with light machine guns and heavy mortars, was put together. I was part of this raiding party. <laughs> Believing that the artillery spotters were positioned in the nearby town of Mikhailovka, we were ordered to take the town and then burn it to the ground. The operation progresses quickly up to the outskirts of Mikhailovka without coming into contact with the enemy. Then, there in a large potato field, the first resistance is encountered. The Russians, lying in extremely well-prepared and camouflaged defensive trenches and foxholes, allow our raiding party to pass. Then they fire on us from behind. We've fallen into their trap. All lying in prone position on the ground, any movement seen by the enemy is immediately fired on. Pinned down, with the situation getting more desperate by the moment, 2nd Lieutenant Chemnitz suddenly jumps up and begins firing his machine pistol into the closest enemy position, which is only about 10 meters away. After firing off just a few rounds, Chemnitz's weapon jams. He's hit by two enemy rounds and crumples to the ground in the middle of the path. Another soldier scampers out on all fours trying to reach Chemnitz to pull him out but gets shot in the head. A second soldier tries to do the same but is hit in the same way. A third soldier carrying an MG jumps forwards but after squeezing off just a few rounds also gets shot in the head. The Russians keep us pinned with accurate fire from well-protected positions 
and we're not able to return fire effectively. We simply have no targets in front of us. Seeing no alternative, the raiding party is divided into two small groups, and we creep forwards, hoping to outflank the enemy. When in position, the signal is given, hand grenades are thrown, and we storm forwards. Attacking simultaneously from both sides, predominantly using grenades and pistols, we engage in vicious close combat. One position at a time, we manage to kill the enemy. Not far from this line of defense lies Mikhailovka, which we advance on and occupy quickly. As instructed, we burn the town, thus fulfilling our orders. However, we have taken considerable losses. In addition to the four fallen men, we also have four that are badly injured. This includes Sergeant Stodic, who, while trying to provide cover fire for Chemnitz, received a gunshot wound to the chest. In the next Tagen, Over the next few days, the Russians attacked various times with a strength of two to three battalions. Each time we allow them to advance to point-blank range and then hit them hard and beat them back. In spite of eliminating their observation posts in Mikhailovka, the enemy continues hitting us up in our elevated positions with barrages from its heavy artillery. But again, we've been able to build out our defensive bunkers, and these barrages have little effect. This time, we've even managed to gather tables and chairs to make our stay more comfortable. In the central area of our camp, we set up a fire where we cook. In the evenings, we snuggle together comfortably around it and talk. The day before being relieved, the Russians hit us again hard with artillery, forcing us to remain in our bunkers and we miss our usual dinner of fried potatoes and cucumber salad. That night we go to bed hungry, our stomachs growling in complaint of the injustice. If you like material created using primary historical sources like this, please remember to subscribe to the channel and like the video. Use the QR code to create a free account and check out the example exclusive footage. Thanks for watching.